Welcome to the interview and welcome to Washington, D.C. Today we are taking the temperature of the global economy, speaking to the head of the International Monetary Fund. The IMF is just holding its annual spring meetings here in the U.S. capital, and it's come out to warn that global growth this year won't be as strong as previously forecast. And Christine Lagarde says that there is a danger that the global economy is heading into a new mediocre. But what does a mediocre mean for the global economy, and what can be done about it? Christine Lagarde, thank you very much indeed for speaking to uh, France 24. It's a pleasure. I want to ask you about your global growth forecast. You have just slashed that forecast from 3.4% to 3.2% growth for 2016. For a lot of people, that's probably an abstract number. What does lower and slower growth globally actually mean? Slower uh, and uh, more fragile growth uh, means around the world not enough to actually create the 200 million jobs that are needed for the 200 million people who are looking for jobs. Uh, it means not raising uh, the standard of living of many people. And it means not having the conditions to respond to uh, deep poverty in many corners of the world. That's what it means. Um, and that's the reason why we're calling for this three-pronged approach by policymakers and for more cooperation. Before we move on to what exactly you're calling for, where are the trouble spots, in your opinion? You know, we have uh, downgraded, downgraded uh, growth pretty much across uh, the globe. What we had hoped for was that the advanced economies would pick up the baton from the uh, emerging and developing countries. And they haven't which, done that. Well, let, let me explain. Uh, the, emerging and de the emerging and developing countries have faced uh, lower prices of pretty much all commodities. And they largely depend, for some of them, on commodity prices. So we knew that they were going to take a hit, uh, particularly this year. The hope was that the advanced economies would, you know, having gone through the um, seven years after the crisis, that they would do better. And that hasn't really materialized. Uh, most of them are now in positive territories. Mm -hmm. Um, some of them are doing reasonably well, uh, but not that well. And, uh, and there are still legacies from the crisis which have not yet been addressed. And I'm thinking in particular of the non-performing loans that are still sitting on the balance sheets of some banks. That is particularly true in some euro area countries. Not all, mm -hmm. but some. Uh, that is also true uh, for um, China, for instance, where we believe that while perfectly manageable, uh, the issue of non not, uh, you know, distressed uh, and, and post potentially impaired uh, assets need to be addressed as well. You say that hard work is needed uh, on behalf of governments around the world. What exactly do you want to see happen? Could you give us a, a clear example mm. of what could actually help the situation? We believe that uh, the three-pronged approach is needed. Okay, what does that mean? It means continuing to use monetary policy where it's needed. Essentially letting central banks continue pumping out uh, cash and keeping interest rates low. Yes. And that's particularly the case in countries where inflation is low and where there is uh, an output gap. Second, we believe that the structural reforms which have been much talked about and in some corners uh, decided must be decided, must be implemented, and that that should be accompanied in some cases by supportive fiscal policy. Because that's the three prong uh, of the approach. And that is that fiscal policies around the world should be looked at, recalibrated to be growth friendly. And there are corners where authorities have fiscal space that they can use. There are corners of the world where because of high and sometimes higher debt, um, fiscal consolidation has to continue, but all of that needs to be growth friendly. Um, that's what we're saying. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Greece, because mm -hmm. it seems as if we're seeing fresh tensions between uh, the creditor institutions, so the International Monetary Fund and, and the European institutions uh, on the one hand, and, and Greece on the other hand. Essentially, you 
uh, and other institutions are asking for more uh, reforms from uh, Reese's side in order for, for, for you to pay out more bailout aid. Uh, could you tell us about that situation? Where are we now? There's talk of some sort of showdown here at the spring meetings no. uh, this weekend. No, no, no. I mean, there won't be any showdown because there is more work to be done. Uh, we're not there yet. And while it's in everybody's interest, and it's a, a real objective for us to move forward and to move as fast as possible, there is still a lot of work to be done. Uh, we have repeatedly said that the, the Greek economy has to be able to walk on those two legs. One was real reforms, particularly touching on pension, on income tax reform, and on the governance of banks. And on the other hand, the other leg, if you will, has to be uh, a, a, a debt operation that uh, lightens the burden of debt on Greece. And the two have to come together. The reason the IMF was not on board in the first place back in July, while we participated in the discussions, was that right from the start we said, with that horizon, particularly the medium-term horizon, the debt of Greece is not sustainable. And we will come on board if there is a realistic approach with real measures and with a real debt operation. So that remains our position. Things reached a boiling point last summer. Mm -hmm. Is there the prospect or is there a risk that we could face a similar situation soon when it comes to Greece? It is not in anybody's interest. And uh, but we do you believe think that there is that risk. We, we believe that everyone has to get real and focus on the real measures, on realistic objectives, particularly in the medium to long term, and on a real uh, debt operation. If those three factors are combined, there is no reason why we would not move forward. But real reform has to have, real reforms have to take place. They cannot be the, you know, the quick fix that works for one year or two. The objective is that the Greek economy is sustainable, is prosperous, and is sovereign. And that's what we should all focus upon. When you say that people ought to get real, mm -hmm. as you put it, is that a message as much to Athens as to Berlin, perhaps? It's, it's all of us. Come on, it's, you know, if we all share the same objective, which should be that, you know, uh, medium term prosperity, stability, sustainability, it's, it applies to all of us. We, we don't want to be unrealistic. We want our findings, our recommendations to be grounded on the real experience of the country, of the reforms that have been conducted, and of the global environment. We cannot use, you know, fantasies or, or you know, hypotheses that, that have nothing to do with reality. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about your new five-year term. You have just been appointed to another five-year mm -hmm. term. Uh, at the same time, you're facing a court case in France. You're accused of negligence in connection with a payout of 400 million euros to the businessman Bernard Tapie. Could, could that court case somehow influence your new five-year term? Look, the, the court decision has been appealed. Uh, the process will take, take its course. The lawyers will do their job, and, uh, and I'm very confident. And as far as my five years term is concerned, I have a, a fantastic team, I have a, a great mission, and I have a very solid agenda. So I'm completely focused on that and nothing else. But do you have a timeline when it comes to the court case? Do, do we know how long it could take? I have a which is my term, which is five years. What are the challenges in your new five year term? What, what do you personally see as your number one challenge? It's not number one, there are plenty of challenges. If I look at today's situation, we need to be very strongly uh, multilateral. We need to be much more cooperative altogether. When you look at the refugee situation, when you look at the, uh, uh, the, the, the countries at risk, particularly in the developing world, uh, when you look at the international taxation horizon, we need to be in this together. And, uh, and we have plenty of work to do in that respect. Okay, so a long list of challenges uh, there for the sake of uh, the global economy. I, I hope you are successful. The best of luck. Thank you very much indeed, uh, uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, for speaking to uh, France 24. And with that, we're going to be wrapping up uh, this edition of the interview from Washington, D.C. Thanks to you at home for watching, and do stay with us.